Is this Mike? That it is. Hey, what's going on, Mike? Not much. How you doing? Absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to talking to you about this album, dude. Awesome. Putting it together, how how was the process for you in this day and age where it seems like the, the evolution of music means new technology as well? Well, it's definitely interesting from back in the day. You know, we have a lot more resources now at our disposal and a really good plethora of platforms to get our message out to uh to the public so i i think it's pretty awesome well what's really awesome is the fact that people are starting to get into albums again and you've got nine incredible tracks here during an age where it, you know people are really getting back into some good rock yep thank you to be in that moment, though, because, I mean, so many times people have said, well, we've had to lay low on the rock scene because it's not popular. What I love about this is that you you create your own sound to where it can become that popular sound again. Yeah, that's kind of the approach that we're we're taking. You know, we have uh, everyone in the band has a lot of different m- musical styles mm-hmm. and by, you know, kind of incorporating and blending everything together. Um, it really comes out with a unique, different um, approach towards rock music, you know, incorporating, you know, some of that uh, blues, 70s types of style with new age, you know, new metal type of music with some uh, really good uh, and catchy melodies and harmonies in the background yeah because i mean so many people have come along and said oh you know rock and roll is dead and i keep going no you 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 haven't you haven't um heard the the music that's being released out there these days and they haven't heard this album yet if they're going to say that exactly yeah <laughs> let's talk about some of these these songs man eyes like 45s i mean i love the total setup on this because that in itself sets up a good rock sound yeah, so that song, um, you know, we were, James and I, my uh, singer and co-writer, um, you know, we were sitting down, wanted to write a song that was really um, upbeat, something we can open a show with, something we could open up an album with, um, that really had uh, that, how do I describe it? You know, that, that upbeat rock and roll yes. new sound you know, that people could just jam to. And, uh, you know, after just sitting down and going through riffs that I had, you know, that were in the archives, we, we put the song together and uh, James came up with great lyrics and melody to it. And we just banged it out. You know, it was like one of those songs that just, you know, kind of happens. <laughs> But see, you know, but to to be that lead song though, like like you were talking about, I mean, when when did you decide that it's like, oh my God, this this is the song that has got to kick in this live audience? Yeah, so you know, we figured that out, you know, after actually doing a lot of different testing with the song, you know, with different types of audiences, and you know, we we put together a couple of different songs, you know, that were on the same kind of uh, you know wavelength as uh 45s and you know that one really it's it really stood out due to the you know the the bpms of the song it's yes. you know fast and yep. upbeat we, it has a, a single longable chorus to it and then it has a nice little breakdown part um right before uh you know the guitar solo so it was a really you know, good song to open up with, open the album with. And at the end of the day, man, it's a really fun song for us to play live. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think it'll go on to become an encore song eventually one day? Yeah, actually, you know, we, we were thinking about uh, releasing it as probably a second single. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Uh, one of those songs that, you know, you know, that crosses over, crosses over because it's such a great song. Thank you. Yeah. Caught in the middle. Man, you get emotional on this song, dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did that one come into being? Whoa. So, um, so Caught in the Middle, and actually, um, you know, there's a few other tracks on the album, uh, was written uh, by James and I as we are kind of going through or went through some of the same, uh, let's call it personal 
life changes mm-hmm. and experiences. And it was just interesting how, you know, the, the world brings people together and energy and, uh, you know, when, when we were writing, you know, these songs, we were, again, we were going through a lot of the same experiences. So we were able to collaborate on, you know, a lot of things that were going on in our lives together and, you know, essentially, you know, put it down on paper and and talk about it and let people know that they're not alone. You know, people go through these things all the time. And from a musical perspective, I had, you know, parts of the, the guitar riffs and the guitar melodies written from years and years and years wow. ago and uh, never really put them a Zeppelin to, you know, something heavier, like uh, even like Chevelle yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, some of the heavier stuff that Sean actually puts in. And then we, you know, we put it all together and um, it, it really came out interesting. It was one of the songs and live in the middle of that song, we kind of do about a 30 or 45 second breakdown where we just we just jam and we just chill <laughs> and we let the the, the the music be the master and let the audience kind of get lost inside this song you know for about a minute and then you know we come out with the uh uh you know the ending of the song which is i like to compare to uh, like the end of cashmere from Ooh. from led zeppelin or the end of um I want you from the Beatles, where it's just this anthem-ish yep. marching, you know, ending, and it just uh, just came off really, really interesting. So that that's actually one of my favorite songs. I love the way that you are pulling from the the riffs from the past, because as as a daily writer, I always call that dear future reader, because I don't know who's going to pick it up or what I'm going to do with it in the future. But it's like you're you're preparing your future by saving everything now. Yep. Yeah. 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 I. I love doing that. You know, I have, I carry a, you know, my, my phone around with me and, you know, and a, a lot of musicians do this, a lot of guitar players and, and songwriters, and we just hum melodies and riffs into our voice recorder and our cell phones. And, um, you know, cause they just come and, you know, if you don't capture it at that time, it's lost forever. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't, t- I can't tell you how many times, you know, we would just be jamming, like just warming up a rehearsal and we just, start spewing riffs out and mm-hmm. Sean or Raffi or, you know, uh, you know, James would say, dude, what was that? Yeah. <laughs> and I'd be like, I don't know. Play it again. <laughs> well, I can't, I don't remember it. <laughs> so true. so, so true. Uh, yeah, in my phone, I have probably 150 voice notes of all riffs and melodies and stuff that, uh, that we go through and, Oh yeah, remember that one? That was cool. Let's work on that. So yeah, they we we bring them to life. So much metal was uh, was played on MTV. It was such a great tool for musicians. Where is that that platform these days for musicians to get you know to be seen as well as heard? You know that you know we've got to give a little bit of credit to uh, YouTube yep. and to Spotify and those streaming platforms. Um, but I believe it's it's really uh in the live show right you know you go to a concert you want to you know see your favorite band play and perform uh your favorite songs you know off their album so you know you can you can stream it you can watch videos on youtube but i don't think there's anything like the live experience and I'm, i'm a live type of guy i love going to shows and seeing bands play you know authentic bands and you know not someone singing to vocal tracks or right. you know tracks in the background we're we don't do that um i i like you know going to a show and hearing and seeing you know mistakes right and you know it doesn't sound exactly like the album it sounds a little bit different oh they look they're doing listen they're doing something a little bit different this is that's pretty cool you know improvising like people used to do back in the day you know i, I always said to myself you know hey if you want to hear the album exactly like the album then just go sit home and listen to the album right <laughs> you know if you want to hear a really cool live experience you know that you know may deviate a little bit from what's on the album going into some little jam sessions adding some stuff deleting some stuff you know then come see us live because you get the real 
experience um, in, in a live show. What is it about the musicians from Florida that, that carry their own rhyme and reason? In other words, you can tell that that region of, of the U.S. is just is, is as it's always been a bold music front is what it's been. Yeah. So, um, you know, here in South Florida, you know, we, we do have a, a pretty interesting local scene. Um, it's uh, it's one big happy family where we're, we, we all have, uh, you know, friends and, and family, you know, in other bands, whether it's an original band or cover band, tribute band. You know, there's a lot yeah. down here. Um, and there's you know some really cool places to uh, to perform. Um, so you know we we have an interesting culture because it's very diverse, especially down in Miami where you have you know a lot of the Latin culture, and you mix that in with you know with the rock and the metal and um, and some other genres, and you know you, you again you get a pretty diverse you know scene of music where you can go out. You know, basically any night of the week, right? And and pick your genre of music, and you know, find the place that's going to host uh, that type. Because you know, we're kind of the the melting pot of the USA. Everyone comes to Miami and South Florida, you know, for different types of things. You guys have actually played CBGBs. I was with Chris Stein of Blondie just the other day, and and boy, he talked about that place as being a gold mine. Oh yeah, that place. That place was. Awesome. So I was born and raised in New York. If you can't tell by the accent, um, <laughs> so, and that was um, that was the place to be. Um, and you know, we played there back in the day. Uh, we did a showcase there after uh, we were on the Howard Stern show. We yeah. did this big show at CBGBs, and it, it was fun. Um, and it was the real deal and very you know authentic back to the '70s where. Um, you know, they really didn't change much inside the club. You know, you go inside that place and it's just like when, you know, the Ramones and Blondie yeah. and Joan Jett and, you know, all those people were playing back then. It was, it's really cool. And unfortunately, it was, you know, it was sad to see it closed down, you know, years ago um, because it really did have a lot of cool history to it. And then, you know, being a musician, you know, getting up on that stage and just, you know, looking back to be like, wow, you know, how many people and how many rock stars are on this stage that I'm on right now? That's, it's pretty cool. (laughs) Speaking of the real deal, just being on the Howard Stern show, that man loves his rock. He knows great rock. That he does. Yeah. Yeah. We were, um, and he, he liked our music, which was, you know, we, we didn't think, we didn't really actually know what to expect, you know, because he's Howard Stern, right? He can go one way, one minute and the other way, the other minute. Um, so, and he'd never heard our music up until the, the time that he played it, um, on the air. And, you know, he was like, wow, you know, you guys, you know, kind of remind me of, and this is, you know, long time ago, you know, back then it was, he goes, you kind of remind me of, Alice in Chains, you know, yeah. you know, mixed in with like a, a heavier Metallica type of sound. He goes, I really like it. And, uh, and yeah, so that was great. And, you know, then you had, uh, once he played this, the single uh, over the air, we had a uh, party leads from Epic records call into the show and really, he really liked it and wanted to get more information on the band and uh, wanted to see us play live. And then they did this whole feature on us and we played, you know, over at CBGB's and then it was aired on, uh, uh, the E channel, uh, a bunch of times and yeah. still, you know, still gets air airplay. So, uh, the whole experience was really, really fun. Um, learned a lot and, you know, again, had a great time. Yeah. Speaking of a great mix of music, the song fearless, it, to me, it mixes rock with some grunge. Were you toying with that idea? Fearless was an interesting song to write. It was, <laughs> it came up, um, we need we needed one more song for the album, and uh, I had a couple of guitar riffs that I was just messing around with, and the drummer and I we just started. I just started playing this drum riff, and I mean this guitar riff, and he added drums to it, and you know it was a very simple song, and then fearless fearless was uh, was kind of born you know from that, and we wrote that song literally probably in like thirty minutes. Wow, and. Uh, James and I, I wrote it 
and um, I put down some scratch vocal tracks to it and James was like that's your song buddy I'm like what do you mean it's my song <laughs> he goes you're gonna sing that song that's gonna be yours I'm like okay I didn't expect that one but I'll, I'll take the challenge and the job so yeah that's the one song on the album that that I'm actually singing lead on and James is doing all the uh backups and harmonies on and uh yeah we do it live it's fun it's a fun song to play live people like it and uh yeah, definitely a little bit different from the other tracks on the album. So can we send you our speeding tickets when we're jamming out with Hold On? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got some myself. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can just envision you guys recording that song, getting on some highway and cranking Hold On as loud as you could make it. Yeah, that's definitely one of those types of songs where you, you want to just crank it and drive fast. Um, another song, you know, that I've had that guitar riff for years and it's actually been through about three different versions of, of, of songs. Uh, yeah. You know, and then hold on was written, um, uh, you know, as the final, but yeah, I, re I have actually three different recordings of that song. Uh, just, you know, that guitar riff came to me, you know, many years ago and, um, it's you know kind of like one of those timeless ones right you can you know it, it works so um you know to your point yeah it's, it's it's one of those you know driving type of songs where you can just you know get lost in it and just you know be rocking like docking <laughs> i want to see the light show that comes with the song let me go Oh, yeah, me too. Because <laughs> yeah, that, that one right there, to me, you know, the, the light show is part of the performance. I mean, I, I definitely get into that kind of stuff. But when I hear a song like Let Me Go, I'm going, oh, I want to know what they're going to be toying with on this one. Yeah, so uh, we, we do have some, you know, interesting things that we do in our show. Um, and, you know, with the song Let Me Go being our single, um, we typically close with that and let everything go. Um you know, for that song and, you know, put a lot of different effects on. And, you know, we do have, you know, these really cool light boxes that we use on stage uh, to, you know, bring the energy up. Uh, then we have the breakdown part in the middle of that song, you know, it's more acoustically and, you know, it's great, you know, to see people in the crowd who like the album and, you know, listen to it a lot to sing along with it, especially during that acoustical part. You know, and James will just, you know, kind of put the uh, microphone out in the audience, let the audience sing that part. And then we'll give it a nice pause and everything will be quiet. And then, boom, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll crash right back into the, uh, uh, the, the ending part of it. So that song is, you know, really fun for us to play. It's fun for us to, you know, watch the reaction of the audience and the audience likes it and they love singing along with it. Wow. Mike, where can people go to find out about the band? And more importantly, where can they go to buy the merchandise? Because I love seeing merch on people when they're walking around. Absolutely. So you can find us on Grin Cynic Official on Facebook, uh, grincynic.com. Um, we're actually updating the store as we speak. We have a lot of new merchandise that um, that people can get, you know, we have the new album shirts and shot glasses and mugs <laughs> and bags, you name it, we we have it. And then of course, you know, you can find it at the show, at the merch booth. We have, uh, uh, you know, a nice merch booth at every show with some beautiful ladies that would love to sell it to you. Is that tour of yours gonna come through the Carolinas? We are, yes, oh, Carolinas, we're looking at a, uh, an East Coast tour, so that will definitely be part of it. Oh man, when, when you come to Charlotte, we got to get together and have a face to face, dude. Absolutely, man. Well, please come Absolutely. back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Excellent, I appreciate it. All right, man. Will you be brilliant today? Okay. You do the same. Thank you so much for your time. Keep on rocking, and we'll talk to you soon.